we drink is acidic in nature the soap that we use is basic in nature the water that we drink should be neutral whereas the water which is kept for a longer period of time in atmosphere becomes acidic hello students i am dr rupasna to know more about this topic you may refer to the book by s chand publishing the e book link of which is given in the description box acids and bases acids are sour in taste whereas bases are bitter in taste bases also are slippery to handle for example detergent or soap solution is basic whereas lemon juice is acidic to understand in more about the chemistry of acids and bases we have three concepts one is the arrhenius theory another is bronsted lorry concept third one is lewis acid bases first one says that acid produces h plus ions in the solution that means any species that has proton and if that species releases h plus then it is termed as acid a species which liberates hydroxyl ion in the solution is base bronsted said that it does not necessarily for a base to have oh minus with it for example ammonia it is also a base but it does not contain oh minus so he gave the concept that acids are proton donors whereas bases are proton acceptor so ammonia is a bronsted base because it takes up h plus ions to form ammonium ion then the best concept is lewis concept which talks about electron pair donation and its acceptance acids are the one where electron pair is accepted and bases are electron pair donors a general reaction for acids in aqueous mediums involve h plus ions taken by water molecule to form hydronium ion and a minus so an acid forms the conjugate base whereas a base forms the conjugate acid here i am taking water as base because it is accepting h plus ions and uh, correspondingly hydronium ion is called conjugate acid commonly known strong acids as hydrochloric acid nitric acid hclo4 then we have diprotic acid as sulfuric acid we have triprotic acid as phosphoric acid the basicity of an acid depends upon how many h plus ions it can liberate this is a monoprotic acid because it can liberate 1 h plus this is a diprotic it is because it can liberate two protons this is a triprotic acid because it can liberate three proton so that is how we determine the uh, basicity of an acid water is an amphoteric substance because it can act as acid as well as it can act as base it can uh, dissociate itself into h hydronium ion and hydroxyl ion this is a self dissociation reaction or self ionization auto ionization of water in which both things are present uh, how to measure the uh, strength of an acid it is based on the ph scale ph scale stands uh, for the activity of hydronium ion present in the system it is the power of hydrogen ion so activity this is log minus of log to the base 10 activity of hydrogen ion present if it is in water we say hydronium ion activity becomes equal to concentration at low concentration of uh, the acid taken so in generally in the books you will see log to the base e concentration of h plus ion because we are talking about the dilute solutions only in the concentrated solution we have activity term here uh if i talk about water then water also because of its auto ionization is producing h plus ions and oh minus ion but this protonation is not strength wise it is not strong the auto ionization reaction is the equilibrium and the equilibrium constant of this 
equilibrium constant of this reaction is very small the kw ionic product of water is 10 raised to the power 10 raised to the power minus 14 at 25 degrees celsius so with such low ionic product we say that the value of H plus concentration of H plus and OH minus are very low and uh, this these are 10 raised to power minus 7 molar of hydrogen ion present in water and OH minus ion again present as 10 raised to power minus 7 molar. A neutral water hence has pH equal to 7 because it is 10 raised to power minus 7. Uh, how to find out the basic strength? It is from pOH which is same as this. And similarly you can find out the pKa of any weak acid where Ka is the dissociation constant of acid. So as pH decreases the concentration of H plus ions increases and vice versa. So we are finding out pH from the concentration of H plus ions. Uh, one once you have understood this concept, let us understand this in the solubility equilibrium. When we dissolve a particular solute in the in, in solvent, then uh, you know what are saturated solutions? A stage is reached where no more solute is soluble in that solvent. That means now there occurs a dynamic equilibrium between the solute molecule going into the solvent and then sol solute molecule coming back from the solution and forming the precipitate. So this kind of a equilibrium established in the saturated solution. Uh, so that is the highest point of the solubility at that particular temperature. But if we talk about a sparingly soluble salt, what is sparingly soluble salt? Sparingly soluble salts, these are the salts which are very less soluble in any particular solvent. That means only a very few particles of that solutes are undergoing into the solution. For that, if you want to find out how much is that salt is soluble in water or in any solvent, then we apply the equilibrium concept. Okay, so, so uh, initially, you know, initially for normal solute it is uh, soluble but no, uh, for sparingly soluble salt we have to write the equilibrium reaction. So uh, a saturated solution is not necessarily the concentrated solution okay because uh, for a sparingly soluble salt we will have initially only a saturated solution because the uh, the uh, particles are no more going into the solution. So how to apply the equilibrium concept suppose i have silver chloride solid which is not going much into the solvent but the small amount is going into the solvent and forming ag plus and cl minus if i write up the equilibrium constant for this i will have concentration of the product divided by concentration of the reactant since my reactant is present in the solid state the activity of this will be equal to 1 so i will have the solubility constant solubility product as concentration of ag plus and cl minus this is called ksp remember that here stoichiometries of the ions were 1 so here it was 1 but suppose you have different stoichiometries suppose here it is 1 and here it is 2 then the solubility reaction uh, would be that initially this is present in certain concentration s and this is 0 0 at equilibrium at equilibrium what happens is some amount of this is soluble so solubility is represented as s moles per liter this will be represented as twice of twice of s so when i write ksp when i write ksp for this reaction it will be concentration of calcium into twice of con concentration of fluoride raised to the power 2. This is how we find out the solubility of a particular reaction. So how to determine the KSP for, uh, KSP for reaction at equilibrium? You first write down the equilibrium reaction. The first step is to write down the equilibrium reaction. The second is to balance the reaction. Third is to write down the 
concentration of species at equilibrium concentration of species at equilibrium and then write down the equilibrium constant ksp so uh, here for example uh, a question is uh, you have the solubility given of this particular salt find out ksp now for this particular salt i am assuming that uh, when it dissociate it will form 1 ca2 plus and 2f minus so after dis dissociating the same concentration will be for calcium ion and twice will be for fluoride ion so on substituting it in the formula we get ksp value as this uh also in the solubility equilibria it is important to understand the relation between ionic product and solubility product uh, or when will the precipitation occurs ionic product is simply this multiplication of the uh, concentration of the ions produced by a solute whereas solubility product is the is at the saturation point or is written only for the sparingly soluble salt so the in the equilibrium condition does not require the two ions to be equal equilibrium will still be established when the ionic product does not exceed the value of ksp so if the ionic product is less than the value of solubility product then the at that particular temperature the solution is still unsaturated and precipitate will not take place so uh, when i start adding suppose you know in the chemical reaction you must have observed in lab that when i mix the two solutions the precipitation sometimes do not occur but suppose i mix uh, silver nitrate solution with potassium chloride with requisite amount of uh, the ions present then just by mixing the precipitate of silver chloride forms and if the ionic product is greater than the value of ksp the solid precipitates formed so if ionic product kin is greater than ksp then only precipitation will take place so this is a very important concept in the qualitative uh, analysis of mixture of inorganic salts where the precipitation of group 3 cations and precipitation of group 5 cations takes place on the basis of solubility equilibria that in both these we are adding the base but the amount of base required by group 3 cation to precipitate is different from that of group 5 so this is a very important application of the solubility equilibria and the precipitation reaction we have understood the application of it but what are the disadvantages or limitations of using ksp it is only applicable to sparingly soluble substances we cannot apply it for a completely soluble system or it is applicable only to insolubles we can say and the second is it cannot be applied very successfully to moderately soluble or very soluble substances uh, it cannot be applied to various uh, very soluble substances so in this part we have covered the basics of acids and bases what are the different types and what are the requirements of establishing a solubility equilibria also we have learnt about its application during the precipitation reactions in the next part we will learn about water and its chemistry to know more about this topic you may refer to the book by s chand publishing the e book link of which is given in the description box if you found this video interesting please like share and subscribe the s chand academy channel also don't forget to press the bell icon for getting future updates thank you without the permission of the copyright holder